The story continues on the day of Havrian Academy's placement exams. Various people had gathered to watch the exams in the stadium, the commoners, the nobles, and even reporters. Romantica complained about how loud the place was, which was obvious because the placement exams were the greatest events held within the academy. Romantica pointed out that Desir was wearing his necktie correctly, which made Prim blush as he looked because he didn't notice. Desir said formal events were a pain in the ass since he usually dressed casually, while Romantica said jokingly, Really? I just thought you were an exhibitionist and didn't like to wear your tie properly because you wanted to show off your body. Which made Desir perplexed, while Pram blushed and told Desir he looked great either way and they can go buy a more comfortable necktie later. Romantica was still uncomfortable with the loud noise as they were preparing to walk onto the stage. Desir was somewhat glad they weren't too nervous and asked if they were ready, and they both agreed confidently. As they walked into the stage, the commoners pointed at them while the nobles called them an eyesore, but overall they were being cheered on by most of the people. Speaking of cheering on, we would like you to help cheer us on by hitting the subscribe and like button. As videos like this take a lot of time and detail to make, one of their opponents in the Alpha class looked at Desir and said he looked ordinary, but another one told him not to get cocky. Did he forget what Professor Pugman told them? He told her not to worry, and that he would definitely pulverize them, while Ajess just looked at Desir and his team silently while on Desir's side, he was giving them their positions. Desir said, Romantica, you are going to be our sniper, you are going to position yourself far away from us, and you are going to use your search magic to locate the enemy positions. After you locate them, you are going to take them down. She had a weird imagination of a sniper in her head as she was perplexed by the role. She then said, You want me to be a sniper? Hmm. I don't know if my magic will work on the Alpha class students. Then Desir said, You just need to fire your magic at them as soon as you detect them. It doesn't matter if they are in the Alpha class or not. If you do not give people enough time to prepare and react, they will be caught off guard. But she was still unsure of herself. She said it was her first long distance attack so she doesn't know how much force she will need to use. But Desir told her not to worry, since the ball she has been using to train was made with the same strength and durability as a human head. Romantica remembered the ball, but paused, and thought to herself that all the training he made them go through was all in preparation for this day, and he predicted the kind of situation they would be in. Then Desir said, Pram, you are going to protect us. You will be the half-dealer, Pram said. Yes, sir. While Romantica thought to herself, Desir, you... Just what is your real identity? Then she said, So both of our positions have been determined. Desir, what is your position going to be? Then Desir said, Hmm, if I had to explain it in simpler terms, I guess I will be the playmaker. System notification. The gate to the shadow world is now opening. All students may line up and enter through the gate this time. Starting now, let the placement exams begin. They were teleported separately to a forest. Desir looked around and confirmed the time was around 11. System notification. Locate the enemy's base. I, you are a soldier. You have received information that states that a hostile enemy base is nearby. Please search for it. Desir said he didn't know Romantica or Pram. Then he smiled and dodged an attack that destroyed the tree behind him. He was a bit impressed by an ice bolt the Alpha class student shot at him. Then she said she was quite lucky. She couldn't believe she had found him so fast already as she called his name. Desir joked about not realizing how famous he was, but she said famously in a bad way, but he said that's quite unfortunate. She cast an ice spell while he cast a fire spell, and then she cast a water spell simultaneously, which was used as a defense spell. The water spell extinguished the flame spell, but the water spell plugged and stopped her own magic or so he thought before the water ice magic suddenly exploded and blasted him away. The frozen ice exploded and pushed Desir backward, but he protected himself with his arms. Then the ice fragment stopped in the air and started spinning around, making a cyclone cutting the edge of his sleeve, cutting his face, and even cutting the tree. But he didn't seem bothered at all. She said, This level of magic is something commoners like you will never achieve. Any last words? She said with a disgusting face. Desir said, I do admit, I was a bit surprised. The idea behind your magic was good, she responded saying, huh. Then he said while analyzing her magic, however you picked the wrong opponent. Then he disabled her magic and said, never look down on your opponents and always think ahead of your opponents. 
That's the basics of the battlefield. She was confused as to how he was able to analyze and disable her magic. Then he cast an ice spell the exact same way she did. And when she tried to block it with another spell, it broke into ice shards and hit her from all angles. Then she weakly called his name before being eliminated. One person has been eliminated. There are now currently 29 contestants standing. An Alpha class student complained about how he was dropped into a grassland and how hot the weather was as he walked through the grassland. He felt the wind behind him and was happy at least the wind was blowing, but he was immediately sniped by Romantica with a water spell. One person has been eliminated. There are now currently 27 contestants standing. Her and Pram were summoned together. He asked if she had seen Desir, and she said, Not yet. He's probably been summoned far away. In any case, we were both lucky. We were summoned pretty close to each other. He asked if they could find Desir soon, and she said, Of course. Pram, do you think you can step back a bit from me a bit? Then he stepped back. She used her location magic to search the area. She said to herself, There are two nearby. No wait. Make that three. There is one other person in the other direction as well, so that makes four. So she shot a water spell with her two fingers like a gun. Since she was their sniper, she wanted to take out the person on the other side first, but her magic was analyzed, so she told Pram to get ready. He was a bit startled, and she said she had found Desir, which made Pram excited. But unfortunately, two Alpha class students, a guy and a girl, showed up, then found her location since she used search magic so carelessly and he called them trash saying nothing is to be expected of them. Then Romantica smiled and said, Trash, huh? Shall we see if we truly are trash then? As he approached them, she smiled confidently, saying, Even if you knew where we were located, the fact that you think you can beat us, I don't know where you get that confidence from. Pram unsheathed his rapier, and as the Alpha class student guy was about to talk back, Pram instantly rushed and stabbed him three times, but he blocked it with one arm and repelled Pram. His attack failed, and Romantica commented that they were quite skilled. The female Alpha student was worried about her partner, but he said with a serious look and tone, Did you really think an attack of that level would hurt me? Stop being flustered and get ready, while Romantica told Pram to get ready too. Both of them rushed at each other and struck multiple times. Pram used a rapier, while the other used a heavy sword. Then Pram changed his tactics. He increased his speed and started using the trees by jumping on them rapidly and randomly. The Alpha class girl was so surprised by his speed and wondered how someone like him was in beta while the guy was infuriated and used his whole power to smash the ground, telling them not to look down on him. He told his companion that was her chance and that she should use her search magic, and she answered. Just as she was about to cast her spell, she was sniped by Romantica on her left leg, which caused her to fall and ring in pain. Then she said with a cocky look, You shouldn't only focus on Pram. Otherwise, I would be sad if you forgot about me. While panicking in a bad situation, the Alpha class student boy told her to hurry and get up while looking at her. And at that moment, Pram instantly snuck on him and said, In a battle, it's best you don't look away from your opponent. And he swung his sword in anger to cut Pram. But he jumped into the air so quickly, and the Alpha class student was surprised. Then Pram said, Now isn't the best time for you to put your focus on me, you know? But before he could even react, Romantica said to him, your senses are too dull. Farewell, Mr. Alpha Class. Before sniping him in the head. One person has been eliminated. Then she said, The way you guys executed your plan was wrong. If you guys attacked us as soon as you detected us, you guys probably would have won. This is all your fault for looking down on a Beta Class student. Then she asked Prom if he was done on his end, and he agreed after eliminating the girl. One person has been eliminated. Then he excitedly said they won easily, and she agreed and said it would be nice if all their opponents were to underestimate them for being beta class students. Then she commented on his skills getting better, and he said happily that it was thanks to Desir. Then she remembered and said she had forgotten all about him. Romantica yelled out, Hurry and come out! I know you're over there! You've been observing us for quite some time now! Then he laughed and came out, knowing she already knew. Pram was completely surprised to see it was Desir, while Romantica puffed, saying his personality was so weird. He laughed, saying they were doing so well, and he got carried away watching them that he missed his time to step in. He said he was planning to help them, but it seemed they didn't need his help. Romantica puffed, being confident in herself, and saying of course while Pram was overly excited, and asked him if he was watching them the entire time then. Romantica asked about his thoughts after watching them fight, 
and he said they fought way better than he anticipated. Pram asked if he too fought well, and Desir patted his head and said he fought well. Romantica thought to herself that the strongest magic she cast was easily analyzed by him, even if they were in the same party. But before she could finish, he called her by her name, patted her, and praised her for doing well. She was blushing so hard as she was going on a full meltdown. But since she was a tsundere, she acted differently, unlike how she really felt, and was yelling at him, asking him what he was doing. Then he said innocently that she was looking at him as if she wanted a compliment as well, and she began to deny it, even though it was true. Then he said it was late, and it was probably going to start soon. The skies began to turn dark, and under a clock tower in a forest, countless creatures appeared hidden in the shadows with bright red eyes. In another area, there was an explosion, and the Alpha Class student was smoking and on fire before collapsing. Then his opponent in a long red robe said, It was nothing personal. Your luck was just bad, as he turned around and walked away. One person has been eliminated. There are now currently 24 contestants standing. Pram pointed out from the system notification that another person was eliminated, and Desir said it would seem so. Then Romantica asked Desir about the plan. He said he would discuss it with them, and he remembered. He began explaining and using a stick to draw the ground. There are two ways for us to advance to the Alpha class. The first method is for us to clear the quest objective of the Shadow World and take first place. The second method is for us to survive and become one of the nine last standing. Then Romantica added, But you told us the first method was impossible for us, right? And he said, Yep, it's not possible with our current power level, as we would need to clear the objective and defeat the other parties at the same time. She thought about it and said he was right. Then he continued the explanation with the stick as they listened and observed it. We don't need to take first place, we just need to remain within the top nine. There are currently 24 contestants remaining, so while the other parties are fighting each other, we will need to eliminate 15 more people. He smiled and said it sounds easier than the first method, right? Pram agreed, and Romantica saw what he drew was all three of them. Then she giggled to herself, and a raindrop touched her head. Then she looked up, and it began raining. She shouted and said it was raining, so they sought shelter and went down a path. They stood under a tree as they waited for the rain to stop. Desir said, It's probably going to rain for a long time. It seems it's going to be hard for us to continue with our plan right now. But Pram said he was very happy as he smiled and clung to Desir's shirt. Desir patted his head and laughed lightly. Then he told them to let all rest up before going out. As Romantica stood beside them, she thought to herself, Within the Alpha class, he wants us to be within the top nine. This is probably something I would never achieve if I was all alone. I wonder... What? What would have happened if I accepted Donovan's proposal? Then she thought of what he said when he called them trash, and she thought most likely her identity as a commoner would have been revealed. But before she could go further with her negative thoughts, Desir patted her head gently and called her name. Romantica, stop looking so worried. You've been doing so well so far, and even if it feels like you're going to be in danger, don't worry, you have me, he said with a warm smile while looking into her eyes. She blushed and was really happy inside, but then she yelled like her usual tsundere self telling him not to touch her, and he laughed, saying okay, he won't do it anymore, while Pram said she was back to her normal self as he giggled. She said to herself with a smile, for some reason, this guy, this party, I like being in it. The giant bell on the clock tower rang loudly, and all parties' attention was directed to its sound. Desir said, is it almost that time, and she asked him what he meant. Utilize your prior knowledge to identify which situation you are in right now. Previous's clock tower has been set. The clock tower is an escalation device. It will spawn one demonic creature per hour. A new quest has started. Each party was confused by the sudden new quest. A demonic creature resides within this forest and survives this demonic creature's attack. The quest will not end until the demonic creature has been subdued. As soon as the system notification ended, there was a great roar from the shadows in the forest. Romantica said while frightened, What was that just now? What was that sound? Then Desir told them to back off as he stepped forward. They both called his name from afar while being shaken. He observed the ground in their surroundings, and then both of them at the back covered their noses while saying something was smelling, and then she asked him what was going on. Suddenly something started coming up from the ground in Desir's front. 
Then he said they were coming and hurriedly told them to get ready. While they were still confused, a monster came out from the ground and spooked them since it was a giant demonic rat. While tearing, they both ran and clung behind Dazir. The demonic rat shrieked at them, which made two of them even more afraid as they begged Dazir to save them. Then this time, it shrieked really loud, and they couldn't take it anymore, so they started running. But Dazir tried to stop them while shouting, They're coming! A large swarm of them will come! And suddenly, countless demonic rats came out from behind the first one. The large swarm of rats started rushing towards them while Pram and Romantica ran senselessly from the rats. Desir ran calmly while observing them. You must use your prior knowledge to comprehend the nature of this demonic creature. Kildra Mouse, a tier 2 demonic creature that uses multiple rats as its body. Human blood is its food source, and it will relentlessly pursue prey once it has been marked. Romantica was carelessly casting out her magic spells, but Desir told her not that it wasn't doing anything, so she should conserve her magic for the time being as they ran through the forest. She was extremely desperate and yelled at Desir to do something. He had a plan in mind but wasn't sure if that was the best option. As they were running while it was still raining, Pram alerted them. The road was blocked by a fallen tree, so each of them had no choice but to jump it. Pram jumped over it and landed with no problems. Romantica was still shy, but she still jumped it and then landed on her face. Then Desir jumped it with no problem as well, and hurriedly tried to get her up. Then they continued running, and Desir told them there was something they could do to stop the monster, which was to kill the main body. Then Romantica asked where the main body was, and he pointed at the swarm and said, Inside there. While they were still freaking out from what he said, Desir stopped, removed his glove and used his teeth to tear his flesh. Then he splattered his blood in the air, which made the main body hurriedly run out to get it. Then he hurriedly told Romantica that this was her chance, and then she calmed down and sniped it with her wind bullet. But unfortunately, she wasn't able to kill it, and it went back into the swarm. Then as soon as Desir was about to tell them to run, Pram dashed forward past him and dived straight into the swarm, and they both yelled out his name but to no avail. Inside the demonic rat swarm, Pram tried to focus while being disturbed by the rats. The main body was definitely injured, so he tried to locate it by just finding one trace of its injury. Desir was extremely anxious as he went to the swarm and tried to dig out Pram while calling his name. Romantica suggested using her magic to find him, but he told her not to, that she might hurt him. So he continued looking for him while calling his name, and suddenly a blue piercing light came from deep within the swarm which was Pram, and he accurately stabbed through the main body, with his rapier and killed it. You have eliminated the Kildra Mouse. They were happy that he was okay as they rushed to meet him, but before he could even finish saying anything, he collapsed. The current quest has been completed. As Pram was about to fall, Desir caught him in his hands and said he did well. He overexerted himself so he was really tired. Then Desir told him to rest for now, then Prom slept off. Desir said, Romantica, I'll be leaving Prom in your care for a bit. Then she said okay, and leaned him on a tree while Desir looked from behind with a dark look. Then he turned around and left, which made Romantica worry. He blamed himself for being too full of himself, and putting Prom in danger for a quest that could have been cleared easily. He clenched his fist so hard that it pierced his flesh and started bleeding. Then he punched himself to clear his mind and focus. Romantica was worried as she stayed under a tree with Pram since the rain didn't show any signs of stopping. As Desir came back, she wanted to behave like her usual self and yell at him for leaving suddenly. What if they were attacked? But she slowly kept quiet as he approached, and she saw his look and his face, but he just said it was nothing, and he went to scout the area for a bit. Then he asked how Pram was doing, and slowly he started waking up, so Desir told him they had to go but he sprang up after seeing Desir's face, but he said he was fine. Then since Prom is up now, shall we get going? He said. Romantica asked where they would head in such weather while they were drenched, and then he pointed in the direction of the clock tower. Another quest has been started. Please stop the clock tower. At the top of the clock tower, there is a power source that operates the clock tower. Please destroy the power source. Pram apologized for making them late, but Romantica said it was fine and he even saved their lives. Then, she started shivering and wanted to hurry up and get going. Pram laughed beside her and said the inside would probably be lighter. Desir looked at them from behind. Then he clenched his fist and resolved himself not to make the same mistake and to achieve his goals perfectly as he walked forward. Meanwhile, in another area, 
Agest was fighting the monsters and had just defeated them with her ice magic. You have eliminated the Kildra Mouse. She figured out how they work, and by killing the main body, the rest disperse. One said they had probably killed them all, and another guy told him not to jinx them. The guy reported to Agest that two of their party members had been eliminated, which made her give a stern look as she counted the number of the teammates left, which were seven, including her. A member asked if there was an issue. They were still in the lead, and out of the 18 left, seven were in their party. So by the looks of it, it would be easy for them to obtain a single ranker title. But anyway, she gathered them to modify their position, and suddenly she felt a slight wind which she originally didn't care about, but she instantly remembered, and then she protected her comrade beside her from the sniper. Then she rounded them up in position. The tank was to move forward. The plan was to move towards the tower while being on guard. They were in a bad position due to the weather, and her party members weren't in optimal condition from the earlier attack. They found their location and immediately attacked as well. There were no known students in the Alpha class who had advanced to that level, so the identity of the sniper was unknown. She grits her teeth as the exam isn't going as easily as she expected. Meanwhile, in the clock tower, Desir and his party were preparing to get started with their plan and fight dirty. Their attack failed since Agest was with them, which was expected by Desir, and their continuous attack failing and revealing their location was his goal. Then he told her not to just attack Blue Moon, but other parties as well, which made her question his sanity while he stood there smiling at her like he usually does. He accepted they were weaker than the Alpha class students, but a free-for-all would be a different story still. Romantica wasn't on board with the plan. She said, no, but even still, there's no point if our location gets revealed to them. We need to think of a different plan, one that guarantees our safety. He interrupted her by calling her name and looking into her eyes, then telling her to trust him, and she almost readily agreed. She asked him if they would really come to their location just by attacking them, and he was definitely sure they would, because their location was their target, the quest destination. Romantica was a bit worried about his sudden seriousness after what happened with Pram, so she called him and wanted to address it. But Pram called out his name and told him that the other parties had started coming to the place. Then he said, Shall we get started? The Blue Moon Party had also arrived at the tower. It was quite big. Then the vice captain opened the door, and they saw the other parties in the tower as well. There were about four different parties, and the leader of the ones in red wanted to attack the Blue Moon because he thought it was them who attacked their party earlier. He provoked them and was keen on fighting them. Agest silently observed him. She remembered him. His name was Gabriel, and he was the second among the first-year students. Donovan interrupted and said, Were you guys attacked as well? As he was trying to show that they weren't the only ones attacked, but Gabriel wasn't buying it. As he told them to stop feigning ignorance, he was convinced that a magician that was able to execute that kind of attack, it couldn't be anyone else but someone from the Blue Moon Party. This enabled Ajess to confirm by herself that it was Desir who attacked them, and she thought his plan wasn't to clear the quest objective. With a firm and resounding voice, unlike the usual quiet Agest, she ordered her party members of the Blue Moon to locate and stop the sniper in Desir's party. Her party members couldn't believe it, but they asked about her, and she said she would hold the other parties down herself. This aggravated Gabriel as he was always annoyed by Agest, even from the entrance exam. He said there should be a limit to your arrogance before casting a fire spell, spare burn, at her, which exploded. One of his party members was being cocky, but the other told him to look in front of him, and suddenly Agest was standing there, and she immediately knocked him out with a kick to the chin, and then she used an ice spell, ice wall, to immobilize the other one. He grits his teeth. With his two party members being overwhelmed almost instantly, Gabriel was put in a tight spot, so he tried to urge the Green Party to prove their worth as Alpha class students, and their leader told him he needed not to state the obvious, as he told them not to look down on the Pine Tree Party, and then she immediately rushed at them. Desir waited till the whole place was silent and opened the doors to the room. All the other parties were completely overwhelmed and she barely took any damage. Then she said, What a foolish plan. Desir laughed and said, Our plans would have worked if it wasn't for you. And she agreed. However, when she saw all the parties except his gathered together, she was able to conclude his true intentions which was to make the other parties fight each other so that he could enter the top nine rankings. So she didn't eliminate the other parties, but subdued and tied them instead, 
so he wouldn't be able to enter the top nine rankings. Then her party members assembled, and all that was left was to battle each other. A Jess then said, If you have what it takes to qualify for the single ranker position, then you will have to prove that worth by defeating me. Desir Armin. Then she used ice magic to create Raze herself and attack him as well, while the other two members went after Pram and Romantica. Pram was facing off against Fasibar. He was taunting Pram while they were fighting. He even headbutted him. Then Pram retorted, saying he was a blabbermouth, which vexed him as he swung Pram away. Then he started spinning and creating a cyclone around himself. Pram then braced himself, and then they began clashing with each other's weapon. Pram was waving off most of his attacks and dodging some as well. Fasibar was in a state of confusion because Pram was able to block all his attacks. He was completely different from the time they fought before, where he would get worn out by using his former weapon. In that instant, Pram dashed at him then swung his sword, but Pram dodged it and kicked him on the belly, which made him go down on one knee. He rudely asked Pram how he was able to polish his skills that far, and Pram said he had no reason to tell him that. Fasibar called him a beta bastard while getting up. He was desperate for Donovan to come to his aid. While Donovan was facing Romantica, she cast Windstrike, but Donovan easily deflected it with one arm, calling her weak for a tier 2 magician. She cast a spell, but he easily deflected it. Then, he said she was weak for a tier 2 magician, but she began ranting, saying, It was because I've been sniping so much that I'm tired out right now. Dummy! Then she began talking to herself. This is bad. I don't have much mana left. If he attacks me in a close range, then I will be at a disadvantage. While Donovan said, And what about it? Are you asking me to go easy on you just because you're tired? Then all of a sudden, the ice exploded and turned blue, which covered the area where they were fighting and caused Donovan to be confused as he didn't know what was going on. Romantica figured that the magic spell was one from analysis, and if it was analysis, then it was definitely Desir. Donovan's view was on guard, but his view was being obstructed because of the fog, and he thought it was the same for her. Then as he was looking the other way, there was a bright light from the fog, and it blasted him on his right hand before he could react. Donovan wondered if his location was revealed somehow. Then another one was shot at him, but he blocked it with his sword this time. He figured out her plan. She was using the wind to find his location because, naturally, magicians were weak when fighting against swordsmen like him in close proximity, so she was using the fog to hide her presence from him. Then he said, What a foolish plan. Romantica was constantly changing her location in the fog, as she wanted to finish him off by not revealing her position. Then, as she was about to use her search magic then a magic spell was cast, and the fog was dispersed, and immediately Donovan attacked it, but she evaded it by jumping and rolling over. He was perplexed by her reaction, and she saw the necklace on his neck. It was a magic gear, and he said he told her that she would regret not accepting it. Then he said, Whatever. This item is not something befitting for a commoner in the first place. At this point, she was upset by his negative commoner remarks, and asked what was the difference between both of them, and if it didn't matter if they were nobles or commoners that they were still students of the same academy. He repeated what she said about the same, and she continued to say, That's right, we're all students. In the end, you and I are the same exact human beings. It doesn't matter how hard you try to discriminate this fact because in the end, that fact won't change. Then he said, So you're saying we're equal? You? And me? And she said, That's right. So why are you so full of yourself? Although I'm a commoner, I've also experienced the life of a noble as well. There was essentially no difference as to who we were. He laughed with his hand on his face, repeating what she said about there being no difference between them. Then he told her to shut the fuck up, and it wasn't something a commoner like her could decide that it was something a noble like him should decide as he looked at her with an ominous look. He exalted himself as a noble, saying that, from the moment we were born, status, power, talent, wealth, and fame, all of these are the difference between you and me. Then he glared at her with a menacing look and said, an ignorant commoner like you shouldn't even be uttering that we are equal. She was now fearful as she thought to herself, wait, is he like this because of his pride? No. That's not it. There's a different reason why he's like this. Just what happened for him to be in this state? A skeleton crying out blood. It continued. How dare they mutter that they are the same as us. The honorable nobles, that wrench, and the commoners, do not ever forgive them. My only son, 
The commoners are our enemies. Two more skeletons were now surrounding him while he was in his younger self body, as they all cried blood from their skulls and fell to the ground. If you do not want to end up like your father, you will need to destroy them to their roots. And a skeleton skull with blood red eyes and an opened mouth emerged from the darkness within him. Donovan was convinced she would never understand. Then he activated his ring magic gear and used it on her to cause a large explosion. While Pram and Fasabar saw the large explosion, Pram immediately realized it was her, and he shouted her name and rushed to find her, while Fasabar was shocked at what he did. The negativity in Donovan told him to massacre the commoners. Thank you for watching, and for more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss out on future uploads, or click on the videos on the screen now. Thank you.